Hello, everyone. Welcome back. My name is Hassan Gedi Santur, the co-host of Shah with the European Union. Uh, today, we, uh, I have with me my uh, co-host, Hassan Abdi, who's joining us from the show. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. The spread of coronavirus is the most serious threat to health around the world, and Somalia is no exception. The virus has been spreading across the country since March, when the first case was confirmed in Indonesia. Today, we are going to be talking about the role of art and artists in providing basic health and prevention information and building solidarity, especially between the youth and the art community through the Farshahan program. A new initiative supported by the EU delegation to Somalia to showcase the work of Somali artists in countering misinformation and combating the spread of coronavirus. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you, Carlson. Yeah, and also joining us today are two very impressive young Somali. Uh, first, we have Adnan Abdul Mohammed, who's an optometrist and an award winning youth leader. He's also uh, a street photographer who uses his smartphone to capture how Somalis are um, reclaiming their, their story and, and telling their own story. Uh, his work has been featured uh, on CNN African Voices, among other places. Um, also with us is uh, Najma Ahmed Haji. Uh, she is an artist based in Mogadishu and also in Hargeisa, Somaliland. She is the founder of Najum Art. Uh, we have met both Adnan and Najma in Mogadishu, Somalia. Welcome both to share with the European Union. How is everyone? Thank you. We are welcome. We are happy that we join you in this uh, coffee time. Shah. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, let me start with you, Adnan. Uh, you are trained as an optometrist but you are also an artist who uses photography as your chosen medium. Uh, what do you do to the art? Uh, why, why are arts important to you? Uh, thank you so much, Hassan, for inviting us to this special episode eight of Shah with the European Union. Thank you, Kalson, and thank you, Nichum, for also joining us. Uh, for me, uh, I think what brought me into this field was my passion for not only for photography, but also uh, to make change to the people and country that made me the person who I am. Uh, when I was in school, people used to, uh, it wasn't, it's not as easy to be a medical student and to be a street photographer at the same time, uh, who uh, room around the city to capture street scenes. Uh, people used to discourage me and they used to tell me like, are you still going to document or to be a photographer when, even after you graduate? And I have always been very positive to tell them that uh, as long as I, I will continue, as long as I have two eyes and able to witness a moment that deserves to present or uh, to share with the global world. Mm -hmm. And the whole, uh, why art is, is important to me is because I believe art is very powerful to, to convey a message, a message of peace, a message of love, a message of uh, awareness or harmony. One of yes. the things that you're trying to do with your art is to change the narrative about Somalia. Can you please talk to us about the particular narrative that you're trying to change? Uh, thank you, Kalson. My focus is uh, documenting the stories of the ordinary people working in the streets, uh, like street foods, vendors, children going to school, anything that people will imagine of Somalia. Uh, there's uh, one particular story that I always involve is telling the stories of mothers that work and hustle at the streets of Somalia. Uh, I present their stories because I believe every woman that uh, work selling vegetables and fruits at the streets deserve recognition. She is, she's a heroine and she deserves to be celebrated every day. Uh, and yeah, please keep that up because uh, it's so important that uh, our art reflect uh, life and the ordinary people uh, and not just always focus on demographics. So keep that up, please. Thank you. Uh, my uh, question is uh, for Najma. Uh, Najma, when did you start practicing uh, your art? And can you tell us a little bit about your work in terms of what kind of scenes do you normally draw or paint? Is there any particular uh, area that you want to focus on? Actually, um, um, art is really, um, right now I work full-time artist 
and uh, really it is something i really enjoy and i always feel energetic of doing my background was uh, a nursing i finished my graduation as a nurse um i used to work as nurse but i decided to move to art and do uh, my job as an artist because i realized this is something motivates me something that i can easily do something that i have energy for mm -hmm. um so when when i was very little uh, like seven years i knew i'm an artist because i used to draw painting and on my on the wall and everywhere even going to madrasa going to school i used to throw things in my books and on the ground and everywhere I see. So I knew from the beginning of my life that I'm an artist. And this art can inspire other people and I can send a message, a positive message to the other people that need to visualize. And through my art, I try to do as much as possible to communicate with the people who does not speak or who, who cannot write or um can read those people are really important and part most of our community they don't write or or, or, or read uh, uh, i don't know the percentage of people who cannot read or write but i want to communicate with them i want to send a message uh, through my artwork i want to help uh, the people who need uh, the message to reach them wow that thank you <laughs> wow yeah, um, Hassan, I don't know whether you can see that, you know, we have two professional healthcare workers who have actually shifted their work to, to, to get into art. So this is really interesting, and I hope we get to explore this some more another time. Yeah, this is also absolutely. a question for you, Najum. Um, as an artist, have you encountered any challenges or obstacles uh, because of your gender? Um, yes, actually... Um, in life, there's a lot of obstacles and a lot of challenge. But for me, I had a lot of challenge when it comes to my gender, because um, people used to tell me, uh, art, being an artist in, in some parts, some people are arguing that it's against religion and it is against law and culture of people to draw, uh, to, to do some life, um, I mean, a human being drawings. Uh, they also used to tell me, you are a girl, um, you have to go to your home and raise children and have a family instead of wasting your time doing artworks and doing drawings. Uh, it is even the people always tell me that this is not professional. This is not a real profession where you can earn. Uh, they said it's a uh, profession for poor. You cannot earn good enough money for your art. So... Yeah, I had a lot of challenge from the families, from my friends and a lot, but still I keep going because I know I need to give this message to the world. Mm -hmm. But but do you find that um, aside from all the other challenges that you mentioned in terms of people thinking that it's against the religion or the culture, was there any of that challenge particular to you because of your gender or it, that hasn't played a role? Um, Actually, no, I haven't challenged specific challenge from gender based because I believe even it even helped me of, of being a female artist because people mm -hmm. trust a lot of female artists than male artists because they say male, they Jew, most of them, they smoke so that they, they cannot, they're not trustworthy. trustworthy. Yeah. So uh, in fact, it really helped me as, as a being as a uh, female artist. Wow, that's great to hear, mashallah. Um, yeah. This question is for both of you, uh, Adnan and Najma. Can you tell us both uh, what you think the role of an artist is in Somalia and how can artists do, what can artists do rather, to make our country better? Uh, do you have any ideas about like what kind of role that you guys and other artists can play in making Somalia better? If I start with, my, uh, with me, um, it is very important for artists in Somalia because most of people cannot read or write. So we, we, are, we are very important because we send a message to, the, to them through our art because um, like when we need to tell them something, it's really important to show them visual so that they understand. You know, uh, art is, a, is a, a universal language for people who cannot read or write. 
So I believe art and photography and this all visual image is very important to reach the people, um, the, the big, the biggest percentage of Somalis who cannot read or write. Uh, I think their, uh, their role is very clear to counter misinformation, uh, to have the courage to uh, spread the mess a message of love during times of crisis, and to be able to use their, uh, uh, their, their talent as a tool of advocacy to raise awareness whether it's important uh, for the community. So I also have a question for the both of you. So one of the reasons why we, we wanted to talk to you today is because we are launching an art campaign with you with young Somali artists, including yourselves, in an effort to spread uh, the word about the dangers of COVID-19 and how to create awareness and protect themselves and their families against the deadly virus. Can you, uh, can you both talk to us about what artists can do to create behavioral change in Somalia? Uh, thank you, Carlson. I think for me, it's very hard to convince a Somali person to stop doing what they used to do, like visiting a sick friend or relative, uh, hanging out with friends in tissues or making uh, or doing handshakes. Uh, so the only way to change these behaviors is to challenge the community through arts. For example, uh, an old man who used to hang out with his friends in a cafeteria uh there, there there is an artist who will draw some of uh, 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 an illustration of him uh, hanging out in a cafeteria with his friends and at the same time they will draw uh, that same person with his family hanging out in his home so it will show life before corona and life during the pandemic so it will make some change uh, to to people's lives mm -hmm. And, and Najma, you? Do you have any uh, thoughts? So, yeah, um, actually it's important to, during this pandemic to uh, give the, the real information to the people because there's a lot of misunderstanding of this corona pandemic. People uh, continue their life as they used to and keeping and spreading the disease all over the country. Uh, so we are trying to send an awareness of telling them this what is wrong with, with them and how to stop them from spreading to the other people. So we're using our, through our art, we're using to, to tell the people to, uh, to give them awareness of how they can stop spreading the disease to other people. Mm -hmm. um, just out of curiosity, because I'm currently not in the future and I, and I just wanted to know, um, what is the, what are the situation like in terms of how you live your daily life? Are you able to get around? Do things, or are you are you are self thing basically? Actually, in Budisho, it seems life is back to before Corona. Uh, everyone is mm -hmm. going out in cafeterias, hanging out with their friends. People are going to work, taking mm -hmm. uh, tra normal transportation without mask, without anything. Everything is just as normal as it was before Corona, and people don't care about it. You hear people saying, "I have got Corona," "I have got Corona," and they don't care if they're spreading, they're still living with their families, they don't, they're not quarantining themselves, and things are really messy in the show. Things are really messy. So this question uh, is for both. Uh, what are your, your dreams and ambitions for this art campaign that we're going to be doing together? What, what do you ideally like to see happen to it in terms of reaching people and, and hopefully changing hearts um, and minds? Yeah, um, actually what I was think what we were thinking about is to really, uh, we see how things are messed here and people are really spreading the disease and they don't care the medical stuff, um, um, instructions properly. They're doing what they used to do before the problem for the disease. Um, so what we want is to keep a real awareness of, of people, how they can prevent from spreading this through our art. Mm -hmm. I think Adnan will add more about. Uh, I think this is the first of this kind to be launched and uh, supported by the European Union. Uh, it will bring together artists from uh, different regions across the country. It will be a platform uh, to work uh, collaboratively with other artists and it will be 
uh, a place for sharing experiences and to combat the coronavirus together. It will also be a moment of appreciation because uh, the young artists work will be shared uh, with uh, wider audiences and it will be a moment of appreciation that they are doing something for their country. Mm -hmm. Right, thank you. Uh, Carlson, do you have any anything you wanted to add? Any questions that you wanted to ask uh, Adnan and Najma? Um, not, I, I don't have a question, but I just have a comment, uh, an observation from the conversation we've had with uh, Nujum and Adnan. Um, mm -hmm. I think what what we are um, this initiative will be supporting is actually helping us develop uh, context specific and um, you know Somali kind of culture appropriate uh, messaging. So I think uh, what's been happening a lot is that we're getting a lot of like, you know, generic information and, uh, and products coming from other parts of the world and then they just change the language into Somali. Um, I think what has been missing is really that Somali uh, specific uh, message where it's been um, uh, thought of by a Somali about, you know, how, the Somali like to receive messaging. So for example, through poetry, you know, through um, visual arts. Uh, so I think what we have been lacking and what I think Adnan and Nujum and all the other artists that will be working together will be actually bring, bringing really Somali um, kind of um, messaging that's developed by Somalis for Somali. I think that's been missing a lot. And, it could actually maybe close that gap that we have now where Somalis are really not uh, paying attention to the to the uh, cautions that we are being mm -hmm. given about how to social distance, how to, uh, how to wash our hands uh, and such. So I think messaging coming from Somalis themselves about you know, how to, to do the caution. Yeah, fantastic. I, I couldn't agree with you more. I think that's really important to have culturally uh, specific uh, messaging. Um, uh, well, I've been speaking with uh, Najma Ahmed Haji and uh, Adnan Addo Mohammed. They were both in Mogadishu and also joining uh, joining us was uh, the co-host of Shah with the European Union, Carson Abdi. Uh, thank you so much everyone for joining us. Uh, this was really uh, a fun conversation and uh, keep up the great work and I, and I, I look forward to seeing all the great work that comes out of this uh, art initiative. So thank you so much, everyone. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you.